Laser Level Basics. In this video, we will talk about the basics of using a laser level to calculate or check grade. To start, when setting up the tripod, make sure that the top plate of the tripod is roughly at hip level. This ensures that as the laser spins, it isn't shining right into the eyes of everyone working around you the way it might if you set the tripod at the same height you use for a total station or builder's level. After stepping the legs in and roughly leveling the bubble vial, which is explained separately in the video entitled How to Set Up a Builder's Level, use the three foot screws to move the bubble exactly into the center of the bubble vial. Then turn the level on and watch it start to spin. Unlike a builder's level, you don't have to rotate the laser level to check the bubble again at 90 degrees. As the laser spins, it creates its own auto-leveling effect. In fact, the laser level won't start spinning unless it's close enough to level for this auto-leveling feature to work. All right, we have a rebar set to the design elevation of our finished floor. That elevation is 1026.00 feet. I'll set the level rod exactly on top of the rebar and loosen the laser level receiver so that it moves freely and then adjust the receiver up and down along the rod until I can tell that I'm close to my level line. Quick beeps and the downward pointing triangle means move the receiver down. The slower beeps and the upward pointing triangle means adjust the receiver up. But I'm listening for that flat line solid tone and looking for the black bar displayed when the receiver crosses the exact height of the laser at the level line. The entire time I'm also watching the bubble vial on the receiver just to make sure that the rod is plumb. An out of plumb rod will give you a higher rod reading just like the diagonal hypotenuse on a right angle triangle is always the longest side. Once I'm close, I'll tighten the receiver, making smaller and smaller adjustments up and down until the receiver is at exactly the right height on the rod. Then I'll tighten the receiver and take my final reading. See how the horizontal black line corresponds with the top of the receiver bracket? The black line is where the laser crosses the receiver when it's at the same elevation as the level. And then the top line of the bracket is where I take my reading. And my backside reading here is 3.91 feet. You'll notice I'm not reading to the thousandths anymore. Unlike a builder's level, which has a very tight crosshair, which can be used to take precise readings to the thousandths, the beam of the laser level is at its best a tool operating at around one hundredth of a foot accuracy. And even that is the higher end, more expensive version. As with any piece of equipment, read the manufacturer's specs to find out just how accurate your equipment is. Okay, remember, a backside reading is when you come up off a known elevation to establish your level line. In other words, you add your level reading to the start elevation at your benchmark, and this would give you the elevation at the level line. Every subsequent reading will be subtracted from this level line because we will be measuring from this level line back down to the ground. Anytime you move the level to a new position, you must always measure up off a known benchmark and calculate a new level line. Great, let's take our first foresight observation. That means we have already established an elevation at the level line by adding a backsight. Now we can measure back down from the level line to the object of observation. In this case, the northwest corner of the form defining finished floor. Again, I'm moving the receiver up or down on the rod until I get the solid tone, and then I'll tighten the receiver and take my observation reading from the top line of the bracket. In this case, we read 3.93 feet. Subtracting down 3.93 feet from the level line gives us 1025.98 feet. That is the as-built elevation of the form at this corner. As we learned from our benchmark, the finished floor design elevation was 1026.00. That means that this corner of the form is low by 0.02 feet, or two hundredths. It's within the half inch tolerance we were given, but if we are submitting reporting, we could still note that this corner requires a fill of 0.02 feet to reach the designed finished floor. Let's move on to our next observation. 
the top of the concrete base for a light pole. The light pole base is designed to sit 1.5 feet or 18 inches above finished floor. Finished floor again is 1026.00 plus 1.50 would be 1027.50 feet as our design elevation at top of concrete light pole base. Okay, our reading where the level line crosses the rod and the receiver is 2.41 feet. Let's subtract that from our level line, which was at 1029.91, for an as-built elevation at the light pole base of 1027.50. Great, as-built and design are exactly the same in this case. Okay, we're done with our work, but if we really wanted to ensure there was no error in our computations, we should check into another nearby benchmark or verified as-built elevation. If we have to perform a level loop to transfer elevations around the site, we should always close back into existing control. Watch the Level Loops Explained video if you need more insight. Pro tip, remember when our concrete form as-built came out 2 hundredths low? This is why we never used finished floor concrete as a benchmark. It is irregular, imperfect, and usually unverified. We should always come off of a verified benchmark or target card to perform as-builts and quality checks in the field.